Brazil is one of the largest and most beautiful countries on the planet, full of rich culture and beautiful things that often go underappreciated. But with these gorgeous things come a mountain of mysteries that have largely been ignored by the outside world. These are the giant lily pads. With the advent of the internet, however, these things have come into the light far more readily, and people across the globe have realized that there are some strange things happening in that country. From the most painful insect in the world to an abandoned jungle hotel, there's plenty to explore within Brazil. Make sure you stick around to the end. You wouldn't want to miss a desert covered in water. Wow. Here are 15 of the most mysterious things ever discovered in Brazil. Number 15, dolphins fishing with people. As he was cycling along the coast of Brazil, world nomad Albert Sands discovered a unique interaction between man and dolphin at the Mulhez de Barra de Laguna in Santa Catarina. Throughout the decades, with skills passed from father to son, fishermen gather each day on the shores to catch fish, helped into their massive nets by the coordination of a local pod of dolphins. But the fishermen and the dolphins benefit from this arrangement. Of course, the dolphins are able to eat as many of the fish as they want, but there are plenty for both their stomachs and for the men on the shores. The men actually take the time to name each of the dolphins in the pod and even celebrate with them whenever there is a birth of a new pup into the pod. It's overall a very wholesome companionship, and seeing humans work with nature in the wild is always a particularly nice sight. There are too many instances of man just attempting to take over nature rather than work work with it to extract the best for both parties. Number 14. Most Painful Insect in the World the bullet ant is a particular species of ant known for its incredibly painful sting, often being described as one of the most painful in the world. It is distinguishable from other ants because it is absolutely enormous, second only to the greater giant hunting ant. It is also hairier than other fellow hunting ants. The colony of bullet ants burrows a nest with different entrances on the ground between tree buttresses. Some arboreal nests have also been discovered, but those are particularly rare and aren't often seen in Brazil. While these ants do live in colonies, they generally search for food alone and hunt insect prey as well as plant sap between dusk and dawn. The ants are often known to fall from high tree branches onto people's necks, where they'll then bite them aggressively due to a fear of the much larger creature. Once the mandibles are secured, they also thrust their abdomen forward to sting at the same time. While the venom is not enough to sicken or kill somebody, it is widely regarded as the most painful in the world. Number 13. Little Finland Penedo is an amusing little Brazilian village with a very unique history compared to the rest of the country. It was one of the very few Finnish colonies in the country. Located between Rio de Janeiro and Sao Paulo, it is now seen as a large tourist site because of how out of place it looks compared to the other villages. The village of Pinedo started in the 1920s as a religious Finnish colony with large ambitions, meat products, alcohol, and smoking were strictly forbidden. The leaders wanted to build a paradise free from the usual components of human sin, but this didn't work out in the end. The leaders adapted, however, and changed their approach to be one of tourism. This was incredibly successful, and now many Brazilian tourists visit the village on weekends and holidays. The farm started with grand ambitions, but the failure largely came from the fact that the land had been used to cultivate coffee beans. This deprived it so heavily of nutrients that the solitary Finnish paradise couldn't possibly exist and therefore the tourist destination was born. Number 12. The Largest Freshwater Fish in an isolated river within Brazil, there is a reservoir that is teeming with an incredibly rare type of fish that is only really seen in aquariums in the modern day. It is called the arapaima, and they are one of the largest types of freshwater fish on the planet. They are indigenous to Southern America, and specifically within Brazil, but overfishing has led to them becoming incredibly rare throughout the country. Within this reservoir, however, and in the video that you're seeing now, a man is permitted to fly fish in order to showcase one of these massive beasts. He is required to release it, 
And this large estuary is the home to lots of these large fish. It is a breeding ground for them, maintained by the government in order to ensure their survival throughout the generations. Aquarium arapaima are beautiful, but they'll never hold a candle to the absolutely massive specimens that existed within the waters of Brazil for centuries. Number 11. Enormous Waterfall System the Iguaza Falls are waterfalls at the end of the Iguaza River on the border of Brazil and Argentina. They make up the largest waterfall system in the world and divide the river into the upper and lower Iguaza. That river is actually what forms the border between Argentina and Brazil. The name comes from the Guarani or Tupi words, Y meaning water and Uasu meaning big. Legend has it that a deity planned to marry a beautiful woman named Naipai who fled with her mortal lover, Taroba, in a canoe. In a rage, the deity sliced the river, creating the waterfalls and condemning the lovers in the canoe to an eternal, to an eternal fall. The first European to record the existence of the falls was Conquistador Alvar Nunes Cabeza de Vaca, but they've been known about in Brazil for much longer than that. The falls are an incredible feat of geography, showcasing the fact that nature can form massive structures rivaling the most impressive of human feats. Number 10. Valley of the Moon on private property close to Chapada dos Vieiros National Park is an amazing and ancient place that seems to function much like a water park. It is, however, entirely natural, with gorgeous pools and water slides created from the natural stones of the park. It's often called Val de Lua, or Valley of the Moon, due to the smooth rocks formed by the river and ancient lava flows. The rocks are incredibly unusual, with some even describing them as alien-looking because they aren't shaped like anything that naturally forms on the Earth. People often say that they look like chunks of the Moon that have fallen to Earth, or even pieces of Venus or Mercury that have different properties to rocks of Earth. The location has become very popular with tourists, and it's been filled to the brim with people attempting to touch and feel the strange rocks that compose the Valley of the Moon. Number 9 the insane skateboarding of Brazil. You may have seen some examples of extreme skateboarding before, but I can guarantee that it was nothing like what is present within Brazil. Sandro Diaz has very little left to prove in the world of skateboarding after winning six world titles, but the 44-year-old man still feels the need to wow the entire world from time to time. The sun was rising and cars were on the highway when Sandro climbed up the bridge's ladder and rappelled out to scope out the wood ramp, housed in the apex of the supporting column of the bridge. He strapped on his skating gear, said a quick prayer, and took off. His confidence grew within each perilous ride up and down the ramp to the point where he felt like he could easily complete a backside air over an incredibly busy highway. People watched with nervous excitement as he performed several tricks and eventually came down safe and unharmed, though incredibly emotional. He has said that he believes it to be one of the most important things he's ever done in the world of skateboarding. Number 8. Largest Lily Pad in the World Brazil is home to some of the most incredible plants in the world, but the largest lily pad in the world takes the cake as one of the most interesting. Most lily pads aren't any larger than the average dinner plate, but these are often described as being the size of tires or even larger. They provide the perfect amount of shade beneath the water for the various fish and other creatures living there, and the top is quite water resistant, which allows rain to run into the surrounding river quite easily. These are the giant lily pads. These lily pads have evolved quite specifically in order to provide protection for the things beneath the surface, as well as to have enough plant matter to survive the various things that takes bite out of them on a daily basis. Number 7. Abandoned Jungle Hotel when somebody is walking through the jungles of Brazil, they're likely anticipating having to sleep on the ground or in a sleeping bag. Perhaps they even brought a tent in order to be a bit more comfortable, and that way they won't have to sleep under the skies that have a habit of raining a lot. What that person probably isn't expecting, however, is to find a massive hotel complex that was completely abandoned by its builders. The Arial Towers, however, are exactly that. They are a set of buildings that make up an abandoned hotel right on the bank of the Rio Negro. Grow. Grow. 
The property featured six prominent towers, all being connected by 291 rooms elevated off of the jungle floor by walkways and paths. The catwalks throughout the trees are often regarded as the most beautiful part of it. All five miles of them span back and forth between the massive trunks, leading to various restaurants, rooms, and even swimming pools up in the sky. Unfortunately, these hotels were left to the elements when the Brazilian government acquired them in 2015 due to the massive debt that they acquired during the building process. Number 6. The Radioactive Beach of Brazil The town of Guarapari is a coastal one located within Brazil and has become quite the popular tourist destination over the past couple of years. The beach located within the town is famous for its naturally high radioactivity level, with several amateur scientists coming down with Geiger counters in order to record readings of it. The radioactive sands actually extend along a roughly 500-mile stretch of Brazil's Atlantic coast. and these bizarre beaches run from north of Rio up to the region south of Bahia. The reason for the radioactivity is not known for certain, but it is estimated that it is because the waves pound coastal mountains rich in monazite, a phosphate of rare earth metals containing uranium and thorium. These small amounts of radioactive metals are enough to be detected on a Geiger counter, and if someone lived on the beach, they would likely be affected. The nearby town, however, doesn't really experience any more radiation than the average citizen within the country, which is lucky for them. Before we go on, do like this video, smash that subscribe button and click the notification bell right now or the centipede will crawl on your face while you're sleeping. Hey, it's time for today's subscriber pick. This incredible photograph was taken off the coast of Brazil by a sea drone that was never able to make it back up to the surface. This was the only photograph it was able to send back wirelessly before all communication with it went dark, and it was never heard from again. Many believe that this is the first verified sighting of the Kraken, and it's understandable why they think that. This massive creature certainly looks the part, and the many teeth on the front of it make it look like a predator that nobody wants to mess with. What sort of creature do you think this is? Do you believe that it's still out there, haunting the coastal waters of Peru? Or does it belong somewhere much deeper? Remember to comment down below with the hashtag subscriber pick and let us know what you think. Now, on to the next topic. Number 5. The City of Forlandia it's quite clear that the modern car wouldn't be the same if it hadn't been for the inventions of Henry Ford, who pioneered many pieces of technology still utilized to this day. In order to do so, however, he had a number of odd tendencies, with perhaps the strangest being the fact that he built an entire town in order to process rubber. Fordlandia is a district of about 5,500 square miles in the city of Aveiro in Brazil, and Ford planned for 10,000 citizens to live there and work for the Ford business. He negotiated a deal with the Brazilian government that allowed him to take the land for free, so long as he paid them 9% of the profits generated by the rubber process there. The project failed miserably, however, leading to the abandonment of the town by 1934. The town was almost entirely deserted, but 90 residents did remain in the city during the time where it was abandoned. Interestingly enough, in the early 2000s, the city experienced a rush of new inhabitants as stories of the town surfaced into the modern media once again. The town actually has a stable population of over 4,000 people as of the time of this video's release, it's interesting to think about what Ford would have thought of this. Number 4. The Penguins of the Summer when you think of Brazil, you likely think of warm summers, beautiful beaches, large mountains, and various jungles throughout the land. The last thing that you probably think of is penguins, because there's absolutely no way they would survive in a land as warm as Brazil. They're birds of the cold, they belong where it's icy all year round, and yet during various periods throughout the winter, a set of five species of penguins known as the Patagonian penguins migrate to the shores of Brazil.
Many believe that this is a sign of global warming, and that these penguins are only going so far because it has gotten colder in those parts of Brazil during the winter. That, however, is not the case. These penguins have been migrating to these beaches for decades or perhaps even centuries, and nobody knows exactly why. It could be that fishing off those shores is particularly lucrative during that time of year. It could also be that these penguins are just more adapted to the warmth. Either way, they are an incredibly strange sight to see. Number 3. Amazon Surfing The Pororaca, also known as the Amazon Wave, is a tidal bore with waves up to 4 meters that travels as far as 500 miles inland upstream on the Amazon River. Its name likely comes from the indigenous Tupi language, where it could translate into Great Roar. During the new and full moons when the ocean tide is highest, water flows in from the Atlantic rather than the other way around. The Amazon's flow reverses and a water bulge speeds upstream with great force. This is best observed during biannual equinoxes in September and March, where people have decided that it's an incredible wave to surf. It is very dangerous to surf the Paraca, but it is also treated as a sort of rite of passage. Surfing the massive wave is seen as one of the pride and joys of many surfers throughout the world, and many travel to Brazil to specifically either participate or watch others participate during the two largest waves of the year. Amateurs are not recommended at all to try surfing the powerful wave wave, only the most experienced surfers even have a chance of making it most of the way up the stream, and even they are generally not able to go the full trip. Number 2. Horrifying Santa Theme Park if you're ever driving through Brazil on your way to Rio de Janeiro, you might spot an eerie sight on the side of the road, a derelict gang of Santa Claus figures and statues lying abandoned and surrounded by palm trees and greenery. If you look even closer, you'll notice that these figures are also paired with a sad-looking sleigh, some reindeer past their prime, and faded candy canes paving the way into what was probably quite a joyful place once upon a time. Now, however, it is simply known as Park Abano. Noel, or the abandoned Christmas theme park. It was the brainchild of politician Antonio Albano Reis, who was known to dress as Santa Claus for the children that lived within his town. It was going to be a series of fun lands themed after various portions of Christmas, which was supposed to span over 30 million square meters. Only the Santa area was ever completed, however, because Reis unfortunately passed away in a road accident in 2004. After his death, the park largely fell into disrepair and eventually closed down without any anybody wanting to take care of it. Photos of it went viral several years later when a photographer drove through, but other than that, not much has been done with the park. Number 1. Lagoons Among the Dunes Every year during the rainy season, the Lenquas Maranhenses National Park in Brazil goes through an incredible transformation. The pristine white dunes of what looks like a desert are seemingly flooded, overrun by gorgeous blue lagoons that spring up practically overnight. There is practically no vegetation within the park, and the massive expanse of sand would lead anybody to believe that it's a desert. The amount of rainfall that it receives, however, actually prevents it from receiving that title. Wow. It receives almost five times the amount of rainfall in a year than the average desert does, and because of this, an entire lagoon system is created by the excess rainfall between the massive sand dunes. Mid-year, when the water has reached its peak, the lagoons can actually reach an incredible depth of 10 feet. This much water in something resembling a desert is positively unheard of. Some of these lagoons actually attach themselves to permanent sources of water, allowing for fish to move freely between the permanent and temporary waters. So which of these things do you think are the most mysterious? Do you think scientists will ever be able to tell us what all these things on this list actually are? Tell us in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe. It helps us to understand what kind of content you like, and that way we can tell what kind of content we should make for you next. Hey, don't forget to tap that bell icon so you're always notified whenever we upload a new one, and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.